anything that even came close to his grand jury testimony. That is what killed him in that case. He didn't even come close to duplicating his grand jury testimony. Mike and the Mad Dog, Sports Radio 66, WFAN. The flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. <laughs> I guess we go to the Mets and uh, Cincinnati. So a lot to do today. We're going to get into this basketball thing uh, pretty heavily. Utah and Houston, the only games left in uh, game five situations in that first round. <laughs> They're not going down without a fight, are they, the champs? Knicks and Pacers, we've got a lot to talk about about them. At 1040, Al Bianchi from the Phoenix Suns, uh, major scout for the Phoenix Suns. We'll talk, we'll talk about the Western Division. Uh, just fine, just fine, thank you. I'm, I'm going to go with E because I can't say Erskine. That's fine. What do you do? I'm an attorney. When somebody on this program murders me, then I can, <laughs> yeah. I can call well, you, right? Well, obviously, it'll probably be Bernard, and that, and that, in which case, I'll definitely get the money up front first. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. I thought that what you guys did to Maya Angelou was just horrible. Why? She's a poet, for God's sake. Well, She's we... a woman of letters. <laughs> oh, she talks about his love and bringing people together. You guys beat her up like no, she we owed did you not. money. No, we didn't beat her up like she owed us money. We, uh, in fact, we played a little extra from her from the speech I, I heard you and, 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 and what came to mind when I heard that was rope dope you guys just <laughs> WFAN 2020 sports good morning it's nine o'clock I'm Joe Tolleson for temperature 60 degrees sunny skies and that's what's happening this is Ian Eagle with 2020 sports on WFAN the flagship station of New York Mets baseball. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It is 12.04 on the fan, WFAN. I'm Ed Coleman. We'll take you right up until uh, Mets Extra today at 1.40. And uh, we'll have that for you. Mets and Reds right here on the fan. They'll start about 2.15 or so at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Coming up at 12.25, I'll talk with Wes Unsells of NBA Radio. He has the Chicago Bulls, Orlando Magic Game 1 in Orlando today. And so Wes will join us uh, about 12.25 and we'll discuss that series. And take a look. Checking the cough reflex of the nation's media elite, veteran broadcast journalist Walter Cronkite. And today, going, going, gone. People who are, who should, and who won't. First, Dan and Connie. The observation from this old revered chronicler of the passing scene, you passed. It's over. Get out. I'm sick of hearing about you. Sick of reading about you. We could put Bam Bam Bigelow and Yoko Ono into your anchor chairs, and nobody would notice the difference, because nobody would care. The Dan and Connie soap opera's concluding installment cannot be written fast enough. No. She glares at him, lip curling. He shoots her. <laughs> CBS wizards replace evening news with convenience store security camera stick-ups. And home videos of 911 calls run unedited over a reggae track. Yeah. Bad news, bad news. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they video you? <laughs> Hopefully sick and Doberman on you. Yeah. And on that subject, I failed to notice the change was in the works, but when did the CNBC interview program, Equal Time, become a wildlife show? <laughs> Gratuitous remark? Yes. Off the mark? Not a lot. For Mary Madeline has chosen as permanent co-host for equal time, Dee Dee Myers, who last endeared herself to a television audience by peering over a lectern at the Clinton White House, trying to explain what he really meant this time. <laughs> a job now held by Mike McCurry, who within a matter of days will have the unenviable task of informing the public that the only Lindsay the president ever knew was George, the goober who played goober on the old Andy Griffith show. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, the president may be related to George and closely. But Bruce Lindsay? Never heard of it. But back to Ms. Myers. When Jane Wallace left the show opting for total rather than just partial obscurity, <laughs> equal times fate was seen. Oh, yeah. The only mildly interesting episode with Ms. Myers and Ms. Matlin might be a steel cage eyebrow-plucking match, ending with Dee Dee knitting a jumper for Mary's baby out of hers. <laughs> Finally, proving from people who should go but won't, one who will, yeah. the aforementioned Andy Griffith. Not 
happening. <laughs> After years of the Andy Griffith Show, Mayberry RFD, featuring a southern sheriff who slept with his elderly aunt, art imitating life, <laughs> then 163 episodes of the Medicare-eligible Matlock, our long national nightmare is over. The insufferable Griffith turned in his last Matlock Sunday night when ABC mercifully pulled the plug. Griffith, typically incensed, complained that ABC wants to cater to a younger audience than Matlock's over 50 crowd, grousing that, and I quote, there's still a place for people with white hair. And of course, that old homespun backwoods wisdom is right again, Andy. White hair has its place. Dog tracks, mausoleums, and lithographs of the guys signing the Declaration of Independence. Good riddance. Get out. For me to watch, this is Walter Cronkite. Thank you, and good night. Well, where's Rather? He's uh, uh, allegedly on his way to the phone. Well, what, what is he doing? Oh, he's on the phone. Good morning, Mr. Rather. Uh, stand by. This is Bernard, Mr. Rather. I'm oh, good. Stand by for the Iron Man. <laughs> well, he wants to talk to Bernard. He'll talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here now, the Iron Man's in the morning program. Good morning, Mr. Rather. Hey, good morning, Iron Man. Man, there's so much stuff to sell in so little time. <laughs> <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning... You're listening to Imus in the morning. Dan Jenkins had a great line, by the way. He said if uh, if O.J. had known he was going to get eight blacks in a jury, he'd have gone ahead and whacked Faye Resnick, too. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> I, I don't want to drag you into this, Dan, but... Check, please. Uh, check, please. Imus <laughs> <laughs> in the morning. Sports. They can have one last chance. Anthony to the timeline with five. Yeah. And across the timeline with four. Down the right side and he fell down. No whistle. And that's it. They win it. Can you believe it? They win it. Nick's collapsed like a bad <laughs> lung. Good Good morning. Morning. This is Mike Breen with Sports Mark Boyle, the voice of the Pacers. As the Knicks lose game one to the Pacers, 107-105. I think I'd probably work on that name. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Miller scores the last eight points in the final 18 seconds, destroying the Knicks, and Coach Pat Riley didn't want to talk to the media after the crushing defeat. Oh, let me alone. Go ahead, let me alone. Let me be, will you? You saw what happened. Game two will be tomorrow night. Reggie Miller, Week. first team all punk, called the Knicks choke artists after the game and said that they want to go for the sweep. They did choke. Shut up, Bernard. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Bernard and I are not big Knicks fans, just because. But uh, still, I, I except I like Patrick Ewing. Bernard doesn't, but I do. I like Patrick Ewing. Don't you, Charles? There's not a lot. Like there's not to like like what's there not Patrick to like Ewing. about Patrick Ewing? Why could you like Reggie Miller? I don't like him. I hate him. Bernard loves him. I know that, but I hate Reggie Miller. <laughs> I love him today. So it's sickened me that uh, Bernard loves him because Malcolm Miller has less hair than he does. If Anthony Mason were a man... <laughs> If Anthony Mason were a man, mm -hmm. he'd put a hurt on Reggie Tuesday night, wouldn't yeah, he? Yes, right. Like take him out. Forearm, yeah, take him out. A mm -hmm. forearm, forearm and a little grape head of his. He'll probably put a hurt on him tonight on some street in Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> probably will. <laughs> oh, I hate you. Michael Jordan had eight turnovers, including two in the final ten. Mike Green. One, two, three. Do that. Do that. advisor, the late General George S. Patton, Jr. At ease. Welcome to IMUS Geographical Encroachment Update, one niner niner five. Oh, save my soul, I can't get a date. Makers of fine. Here's Rush Limbaugh to uh, sing. A liberal liar, Papa. <laughs> a liberal liar, Papa. Your left wing jive about health care and welfare. <laughs> Tell me why the hell I care what happens to all those lazy freeloaders <laughs> and those hiring quotas. Go get a job. Go get a job. Go get a job. I make lots of dinero. <laughs> More than Henry Cisnero to say 
nothing but 24-hour Michael Moriarty. The brooding method actor who left the NBC series Law and Order last year is now claiming he's the victim of a network blacklist due to his vehement opposition to Attorney General Janet Reno. <laughs> In a cabaret piano appearance on CNBC not too long ago... Are you done yet? Moriarty stopped mid-ballot to give an impassioned speech as to why he should be elected president. I defy you to change the channel when this resident of Planet Nutlog gets going. With a better Q factor than a barrel full of homicidal monkey reunion shows, he's a walking 100 share. George Collin is here in George's yeah. going to be at Westbury Music Fair uh, tonight, and... Uh... I've solved my whole sports rooting thing. I'm a Globetrotters fan now. <laughs> no postseason to worry about. No postseason to worry about. Yeah. Very few contract disputes to get in the papers. And, and a very high percentage of winning evenings. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. That was a great station. It was 50,000 watt clear channel station. But the signal was like it went from Seattle to Tijuana, but it was only like about a foot and a half wide. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be in the middle of Sunset Boulevard to pick up the station. And we had a promotion once for Easter and nobody came to it. Yeah. I swear, we promoted for a week and a half and gave away little bunny things. Nobody was there. <laughs> for the most part. San Diego in protest. Yeah, absolutely, but, it's a good idea. Okay, the Tony Awards are out. These are awards for the uh, best on headline issues of the day. I'm Austin Washington's senior political advisor, the late Richard M. Nixon. And campaign advisor, I'm in the morning. Oh, I'm Just in case you hadn't noticed, I've been retained by the Dole for President organization. Right. In fact, to permit me to make that issue one today, J.D., Nixon advises Senator Dole, or how to make a difference even though you're in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> As you're well aware, Dado, Dick Nixon has never let adversity stand in his way. So why should the mere fact that he's dead prevent him from making a contribution? Hmm? Well, my dear old friend, Senator Dole, was wondering what he'd have to do to become president. Right. Well, I've been there. So he turned to a letter I wrote him not long before I began making a contribution as worm food. <laughs> in that letter, I told Bob, and that's what I called him, Bob, you know. Yeah. Bob, I said, if you want to win, you must first run as far to the right as possible. Right out there with shortwave Willie and the better governance through grenades gang. <laughs> then veer back to the middle suddenly, stay there for 20 minutes. Then, without warning, hang a 90 completely over to the Ramsey Clark crowd. Maybe grow a little ponytail, put some Jethro Tull on in the office, you know? And then leave everybody guessing by choosing Mark from Michigan as your running mate on the social libertarian ticket. Dazzle him with footwork, J.D., dazzle him with footwork. Actually, forget me, he should have sought the advice of Bill Clinton, who won election, as you know, on the whatever happens to fit the occasion tickets. Jesus. Oh, well, who cares? Nothing will change regardless. Okay, issue two. 800-pound gorilla syndrome, or the monster that ate primetime live. So I'm watching TV looking at something about a flesh-eating virus because I figured it had to be about the ABC magazine show, Primetime Live. <laughs> I'm a little surprised and disappointed, Dotto. Really? One of my old staffers, Diane Sawyer, I uh, gave her her first big break, you know, has now let this $7 million a year ABC gig go to her slightly oversized head. Right. Have you noticed that about Diane? No. Lovely girl, but uh, take a close look. Her head is slightly out of proportion to the rest of her body. <laughs> well, that's beside the point. Yeah. The story is that she's got everybody at the show hating her because she's getting too much airtime and she's breaking the budget and nobody can say anything to her because if they even try, she'll eat him alive. That's not the Diane Sawyer I remember. Try as I might, I never could get her to eat anything. Shut up. But that's another matter entirely that would be improper to address here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, always glad to see dissension on some big-time entertainment program, eh, I mean? Well, where surly peevishness and contentious spite pour forth from our beloved fountain of hate. The AMFM band's answer to Mark from Michigan, Imus. <laughs> Ow! A truly malignant skull through the old Dick today, eh? JD, from Dick Nixon, deceased former president of the rapidly diminishing United States. You're now the new majority leader of the United States Senate, wow. Senator Robert Dole. Good morning, Senator Dole. Good morning. Did say that the New York Times shut down? I haven't got my paper yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, they <laughs> I figure they probably have it about a three-day mourning period here before they come out again. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. So we have Al D'Amato, chairman of the Senate Banking Committee. Is that where that's going to shape up? And yeah, he's going to be chairman. You can expect whitewater hearings. 
Probably not the first of January, maybe the second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have one uh, job open to the superintendent of the press gallery. If you'd like to have it, I'll try to save it for you. I'm in the morning. If you look alike, Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> My friends, it is I, Commodore of the catamaran called conservatism, here once again to point out the inconsistency and disparity that is emblematic of the liberal agenda. They who preach tolerance as ideology, showing their true hidebound hairs, sicking their dogs on me in the form of Molly Ivans. <laughs> the liberal mound has penned an article about me in the communist periodical Mother Jones, calling me a bully. Oh. Ooh, harsh words coming from a woman who is making her motion picture debut this week, starring in the title role of Gordy, don't you think? <laughs> You'd expect a breed sow such as Ms. Ivans to be somewhat more broad-minded somehow. Rush. And by broad-minded, I imply progressive and do not mean to suggest a Camille Paglia connection, okay? But like, okay, can you imagine, okay, Molly Ivans with a man, okay? Neither can I. Ivans the Terrible says that I consistently target dead people, little girls, and the homeless when I wax facetious. Well, my friends, one of the first lessons I learned my freshman year at the University of Reality was never pick a fight with anyone who you can't lick with ease. But then she goes on to compare me with David Koresh, that I have a cult-like effect on ditto heads, the disenfranchised minions who have been robbed of their humanity by the liberal agenda. Well, forgive me, but when we're talking about the wacko from Waco and the fiery massacre at his compound led by Ranger Reno, aren't we also talking about dead people, little girls, and the homeless? Ah, good point, Rush. But I suppose the straw that broke this particular camel's back was the accompanying caricature of what appears to be a hydrocephalic elephant. <laughs> However, I was not sure if it was supposed to be a gross exaggeration of me or Ms. Ivan's byline photo. <laughs> now, I know you're all saying, Rush, you're playing right into her hands. This is exactly the kind of thing she's railing about. Well, I retaliate in kind to make a point. She employs bullyism to condemn bullyism. The behemoth bimbo's bombast is nothing more than the pot calling the kettle black. It's just another example of the whining, unfulfilled feminazi contingent, the inferior female fledglings resorting to name calling. Uh... More after this. <laughs> I'm in the morning. 2024 20, rolls on. Messier hits the net. The pass to Messier shoots. He scores! Rangers rebound in Quebec City. Good morning. Mike Brain with sports. Howie Rose with the call. The NHL playoffs in full swing. And aren't we glad to talk about it? Yeah. Rangers beat the Nordiques 8-3 <laughs> to, to even the series at 1. Mark Messier, the Rangers' burly but sensitive captain, mm. had a big game and credited his fellow Rangers in what became an emotional post-game press conference. We've had people thank you at this point, uh... Obviously, uh... Oh, man. Time for the fourth period, stupid. <laughs> Time for the world game. Best of the Rangers now come back home to Madison Square Garden. We're leading with hockey. 77. I have heard talk and talk, but nothing is done. Good words do not last long unless they amount to something. Words do not pay for my dead people. They do not pay for my country. They do not protect my father's grave. Good words do not give me back my children. Good words do not give my people good health. Stop them from dying. I am tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick. I remember all the good words and all the broken promises. I miss in the morning. It's still one of my favorites.
Linda, a victim of life circumstances. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm a sin in the morning. Uh, let me talk to you about 12. F-E-C-T, find out what it means to me. I miss in the morning. 2020 sports. Anybody see Young America? She's getting late. Maybe they got lost. <laughs> New Zealand wins another America's Cup race. Good morning, Mike Brain with sports. Black Magic destroyed Young America the best of nine finals yesterday. They now have a 2-0 lead in those cup finals. Way to go, fat Dennis. An NBA play. What you do? Say something nasty about that Serena chick? No, Davis, those are Cuban exiles protesting my policy and not allowing any more Cuban refugees into the country. Who are those other dudes with the picket signs? Those are immigration control groups who resent my admitting Cuban refugees into the country. But, like, I thought you just said you weren't going to let any more in. I'm only letting the ones from Guantanamo Bay in. How many are there? A couple. Just a few. 20,000? That sucks. Where are you going to put them all? Well, I'm sort of hoping there'll be a lot of Americans who'll take them in as domestic help. Cool. The only problem is Florida's trying to pass a version of Proposition 187 in their state. You know, like Pete Wilson did in California. That doesn't make it too easy for immigrants to assimilate. Make social services like health care, social security, unavailable to them. So is that why that Pete Wilson dude didn't pay social security for his immigrant maid chick? Well, he claims he didn't know she was an illegal immigrant. What do you think all those goats in the basement were for? Dinner? <laughs> Knowing Pete Wilson, he probably thought they were for having sex. <laughs> <laughs> that one's kind of pretty. <laughs> Shut up, both of you. I'm in the news time, six minutes, Bill. Good morning. How are you? Pretty exciting interview. Shut up. Why not air like a test tone? <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's like listening to the best of Imus Unplugged. <laughs> if your radio light sucks in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Detroit manager Sparky Anderson disgusted with his players. I've never been at a baseball game. Well, that many idiots showed up. Sparky may be a bad baseball team, but he's still as sharp as ever, isn't he? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Take fourth base. I'm right. <laughs> in the morning. Sports. A shocking result at the America's Cup. Oh, shut up. Good morning. This is Mike Breen with Sports. <laughs> Black Magic destroys Young America in the best of nine finals yesterday, taking a 2 nothing lead. And Dennis Conner. All right, here's Billy Saw Harkins, everybody. This day cold rash is a liar. 
Young America? Jeez, it's getting late. Maybe they got lost. <laughs> New Zealand wins at the America's Cup. Good morning, Mike Brainwood Sports, sponsored by Virgin Atlantic Airways. Black <laughs> Race number three, <laughs> later on today off the coast of San Diego. So I say something to him. <laughs> to get rid of him, but we'll get to that in a minute. Eddie, stay away from him.
In the meantime, you will be asked to distribute to the White House staff the new standard issue uniform, Administration Clinton Williams. Raincoats, handcuffs, electronic <laughs> ankle bracelets. If I may be permitted a personal observation before I dismiss you, no wonder the man's having trouble focusing. It's difficult enough to run the country from the White House. Impossible to run the country from a halfway house where United States Marine Guards are posted not to make sure no one gets in, but to make sure no one gets out. Thank you for your attention. That is all. Hey, Mama, check it out. There's like a plane in your backyard. <laughs> You know, Beavis, you're right. Cool. Maybe it was like one of those Cuban dudes trying to escape from that Castro chick. <laughs> you mean Castro dude. The Castro chick is running for senator in New York. Oh, so like maybe it was somebody from New York trying to escape from her. Now that's a definite possibility. It must be cool to have like a plane crash in your backyard. Well, actually, Beavis, it's a little scary. Hillary, Chelsea, and I could have been inside the White House when it happened. Good thing you're out of town. Oh, we weren't out of town. We were staying across the street. It's not the first time in history that a president has stayed at Blair House. Why were you staying across the street when, like, you have this big, cool White House? They were doing renovations. They're going to have to do some more renovations now that you have a plane sticking out of your house. <laughs> You're right, Beavis. Why don't you, like, sue the pilot? I would, except he's dead. That sucks. Besides, the attorney I'm sleeping with forgot to renew her license to practice, <laughs> which means I'm getting hosed by a lawyer who isn't even a lawyer anymore. I bet that's the first time in history that's happened. <laughs> 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 Hey, uh, hideously stupid. <laughs> Beavis and Bubba here on the Iverson Wayne Program. Beavis and Bubba coming up this morning with their own version of I Miss Las Vegas. I... Hey, Bubba, what's the deal with this stupid haircut? The white jumpsuit. Shut up, Beavis. I'm all say. <laughs> Bright light city better save your soul. Cause there's no telling what'll transpire. <laughs> I'm man in Vegas gonna take control. Wearing Santa Fe thread attire. <laughs> Lobby, it ain't no mirage. It's I'm a sand chug with the whole entourage. Prepare yourself for a hate radio barrage. I'm a Las Vegas. I'm a Las Vegas. There's a show in the main room with a nude chorus girl yeah, singing yeah. about that old time rock and roll. <laughs> but I'm a on the phone with Dan Rather and Amato talking OJ Newt and Bob Dole. At the crap table, somebody just won again. Yeah, he's a crap. I'm out in this room watching CNN, waiting for equal time with Mary Madeline. In I'm a Las Vegas. Yeah. I'm a Las Vegas. Hideous Vegas with the Wayne Newton, Donka Shane, and, and I'm a still complaining. Doing the show was so tough. Yeah. yeah. Hideous Vegas, where you'll find that your best bet is he'll drop another stop set. I tell you, folks, it really can't suck enough. <laughs> How I wish that Siegfried and Roy could make this plant look disappear. What a bunch of mouth. <laughs> UNLV look like choir boys to me now that I'm a in the morning is here. If you need me, I'll be by the slot machines with a blonde and a redhead brunette in between. <laughs> I'm in, are you sure that they're over 18? <laughs> problem for Nancy Sinatra. I'm sure she's a lovely woman. But I mean, don't let them put your picture on the cover of Playboy magazine where they've airbrushed it with a wind tunnel fan. <laughs> I mean, come on. And then show up in person. And you know, and Charles Grodin is uh, drooling and I'm just thinking, yeah. God yeah. almighty. Yeah. Uh, Buy a magazine. <laughs> your radio sounds fun in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. It's stupid. Have some dignity in your old age. No kidding. It didn't look like the same person. No, it looked like Leona Helmsley. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the morning. Sports Radio 66, WFAA. For 33 years of age, Nancy Francine up there, right side class.
Derek Harper and the Knicks dance and prance on Reggie Miller. Good morning. This is Mike Breedwood Sports. Clyde Frazier with the analysis on the Knicks radio network. Clyde, when he talks, sounds as though he doesn't. He has no idea what he might say. Nothing. <laughs> well, what's going to come out? No, not, a, not a clue. No. Reggie Miller called the Knicks. In the morning, Get out, Beavis. I'm tired of looking at your butt. No, no. This is a real surprise. What is it? I'll give you three guesses. Uh, is it a chainsaw? No. Uh, an 80s? No. A chainsaw? No. <laughs> Concert tickets. Yes. You are the king of cool. <laughs> what are they for? Lollapalooza? The Stones? Nope. Stryzad. You <laughs> anal probe? That sucks. This homo tried to sell them to me for like a thousand bucks for charity. So like, I kicked his ass and took the tickets. Breaking the law. Breaking the law. What are you going to do? Take your mom? I'm not going to use them, but face. I'm going to like scalp them. Whoa, that's cool. I could like sell them to another mo for 500 bucks. And he could sell them to the first mo for like 750 bucks. And like... That way, everybody makes out on the deal. Yeah, yeah, except you're forgetting one thing. I'm the one who has the ticket. That's okay. I'm going to scalp you first. <laughs> cool. I'm now 13 minutes after the hour. All right, here now, late headline stories from the I Miss in Washington Network Newsroom. I'm David Brinkley, host of this program, and this week with David Brinkley. Check your local listings. Joined, as always, by our regulars, George F. Will, Walter M. Cronkite, Rush X. Limbaugh, J.D. Imus, and J.D. Salinger. <laughs> now, the news. First, here in Washington, EMS units were rushed to Capitol Hill late last night to attend to injuries sustained by 19 senators, all hurt diving for the telephone when it was announced during a news conference that there was a call from Ralph Reed of the increasingly powerful Christian coalition. This was the chaotic scene, as recorded by a double IW film crew. I must caution you, this may not be suitable for younger listeners. And so it is our contention that Medicare, as a factor of the overall budgetary process, must be thoroughly revised and revamped. And uh, now, who is calling right in the middle of a news conference? It's Ralph Reed, sir. Oh, I got it. When order was restored and the wounded treated, Texas Senator Phil Graham emerged with the phone and later spoke to reporters from a nearby triage station. Well, I told my fellow senators that I was the intended recipient of the call from Dr. Reed because I had a perfect Sunday school attendance when I was 14 years old. So obviously it was for me. Who else would have Ralph Reed been calling? Kennedy? Chris Dodd? <laughs> Pardon me, but I don't think so. Overseas, buoyed by the success of a new foreign policy pressure tactic first employed on his Moscow trip, President Clinton's advisors say the strategy will be expanded. Seeking to embellish Mr. Clinton's frequently criticized international skills, aides had the president demonstrate Washington's displeasure with the Russian slaughter in Chechnya by boycotting a Red Square parade of military equipment. Instead, the president remained inside a limousine and held his breath as long as possible. At one point, Mr. Clinton could be heard gulping air, making friendly contact with native Muscovites standing nearby. Oh, couldn't hold her in any longer, but I, I guess that'll show him. That's resolved if I ever saw it. Hey, baby! Yo, Olga! Uh, come on over here, you cutesy little thingsky. You want to go for a ride on a big old pocket rocket? Take a look at this military hardware. Ah, uh, well, the heck with you. I hope they send your ass to Siberia. <laughs> Meantime, plans are being formulated for adapting the pressure tactic to domestic matters. For example, according to White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta, a whitewater strategy is being studied, in which Mr. Clinton would lock himself in the bathroom during any hearings and hit himself in the forehead with his fists. <laughs> and finally, after employing simple diagrams and even happy faces in her testimony, Dr. Robin Cotton took the DNA lesson she's teaching to the O.J. Simpson jury to an even more introductory level in the latest court session, trying to ensure fundamental concepts of the case are grasped. Yeah. The approach initially raised Judge Ito's eyebrows a bit, but was allowed in. Here's a brief segment. Oh, the itsy-bitsy chromosome was in the driveway drop. <laughs> Fell from the murderer, plop, plop, plop. <laughs> DNA's a giveaway from glove to rear gate latch. Yeah. Uh-oh, O.J., we've got another match. <laughs> Rabbi Mark Gelman and uh, Monsignor Tom Hartman are here. And well, I haven't seen you since we were there in Monument Valley, That was I? a wonderful experience. So, uh, you know, hey, you know the guy who married us? The uh, Navajo Mom? 
No, no, not a Navajo, Mo, the Navajo. <laughs> God, what's the matter with him? I, who knows? He screwed up the marriage license, you know. Yeah, I heard. He just had to fill in some yeah. more blanks. Yeah, well, we got that straight now. <laughs> he wrote down Grandpa Lewis by mistake. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. You're going to a circumcision, right? Yeah. Here's something else, you know, you get to thinking about it. There isn't that much difference in that in the period here, is there? I mean, it's really, you're pretty much dealing with the same thing. Yeah, there is a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. In the circumcision, the pain is the kids. Sports Radio 66, WFAM. Hey, are you? Fine, how are you, honey? Well, I was going to go into what you wore last night, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, what, what about that? I don't get why you kept saying something about what I had on. Well, here's the thing. I don't know why we can't take a, a nod from these from these women of, uh, of the Middle East. What? <laughs> With the yeah. veil and everything, yeah. and the whole head, the well, headdress. Well, honey, honey. Yeah. You have to change your attitude. Uh, my attitude. Let's not have this discussion on here, okay? Oh, yeah, let's do that. I don't want people here. across America to see the ugliness here, okay? <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Well, you I'm seem not... perfectly fine before. You like you like uh, when we have all the salads and I, vegetables. I and do like brown it. Brown rice and potatoes I and do. pasta. And I love it. And your pumpkin yeah, right. seeds and sesame seeds. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, I'll tell you, I love those pumpkin seeds. Uh, you know, I was sitting here just a few minutes ago thinking, man, what I wouldn't give for a big old handful of pumpkin seeds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening the morning on the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAM. This is the 50,000-watt clear channel voice of the Mets, Jets, Knicks, Rangers, and St. John. The Fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. <laughs> WFAN 2020 Sports. Good afternoon at 3 o'clock. This is John Minko. The first 5-5-6. Five, five, Coming back on the other side of 5 in a couple of minutes, the greatest football player of all time. You know who it is? If you don't know who it is, I guarantee you, documented, you've heard this on TV before, the greatest football player of all time when we return. Mike the Mad Dog, Sports Radio 66, Continuing his quest for revivification as a viable political force, billionaire industrialist A. Charles Perot. And I can take a couple of cues along those lines from this old boy who's got himself on the cover of Time Magazine, Amos. Ralph Reed, you hit to this fella? Yeah. Hit to this Christian coalition outfit? Right. Ain't seen anybody since old Joe Goebbels who knew any better how to work a room, Amos. They got about 14 million goobers who all got Jesus in a bottle on their mantle. <laughs> or one of them pictures of him with the eyes that follow you all over the place. Or a bumper sticker that says stuff like, My president is a Jew who can re-roof your house. Or something along those lines. Here's my question, Amos. Just what does Ralph Reed want? I can answer that for you. Everything from Key West to Prudhoe Bay. Or from that picture on time, just maybe a fuel oil truck and a silo of fertilizer. <laughs> now, you're the first one to know, Amos, that I'm for changing the government. But I don't know whether yanking out the Constitution and dropping in Deuteronomy is a way to go, do you? I mean, I love the baby Jesus just as much as the next fella. But I get a butt fucker when folks start saying they know what's right or wrong with the country because they've been talking to God on the Internet. And he says to meet him at a diner in Albuquerque to discuss whether or not to endorse Bob Dole. That there's having a few angels in your outfield, as far as I'm concerned, Amy. My view is keep the manger out of politics and politics out of the manger. Did Jesus ever run for anything? Not even when he should have been running for the county line, Amos. No, sir. But anyway, like with most of these folks that pop up now and again, it's just about inevitable that some guy with a telephoto lens will catch him somewhere doing the prayer well waller with a reject off of the Jerry Springer show, <laughs> and that'll be that. You know, like that Jim Baker bozo with Jessica Hahn. But for right now, these folks are as serious as Kathleen Turner on a fudge cheese blend. <laughs> They're closing in on two million members, a $25 million budget, Faxes, modems, uplinks, downlinks, sideward links, you name it. And they got everybody from Lamar Alexander to Phil Graham falling over each other to be the first to drop their damn drawers for them. I say time for a third party candidate while we still got the first two parties left. And with that in mind, Amos, I'm announcing on your show that from now on out, I'd like to be referred to as Brother Ross. And I'm switching around my slogan to fit this here new reality. See what you think. Right. Ralph Reed make you nervous? There's another way to go. Both Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Perot. Much obliged for having me on your show, brother. You chuck your little geek. Two words for you, Amos. Not 
happening. I got a faxer this morning from uh, CBS News, and it says, uh, I woke this morning at 645, went to the kitchen for my customary prunes and hot water with lemon, <laughs> turned on the radio, and heard the two of you going on about my 77th birthday. It was not an unpleasant way to begin the day. Thanks, Mike Wallace. No, oh, very uh, nice. Please find something else to do with your time <laughs> rather than send us suck-up faxes. We what? just don't need that. Get the memoir going. <laughs> we want to read about when you had sex with Nancy Reagan and stuff like that. Get the yeah. memoir going while there's time. <laughs> well, that's fine. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Quit okay. writing us. Don't feed the pigeons. <laughs> 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 Whatever you old people do. <laughs> at 9 o'clock in the morning. Imus in the morning. in the morning 2020 sports big game last night for michael jordan as he switched uniforms going from number 45 to 23 had 38 points as chicago beat orlando by 10 they even up that series one to one game on headline issues of the day. Back after this. in Washington Network Newsroom. I'm David Brinkley, aging patriarch of television news in general. Joined, as always, by our regulars, Walter Cronkite, Rush Limbaugh, and at our bureau in New York, roving, raving correspondent Don Imus, host of his own highly successful syndicated radio program. Oh, yeah. Now, some news. Here in Washington, despite the clean bill of health he received in his first annual physical exam as chief executive, President Clinton had to undergo what doctors described as emergency lower lip surgery after the combination of the Martin Luther King birthday and his trip to earthquake-stricken Southern California just proved too much for him. The president, speaking through heavy bandages, did manage to talk with a few hand-picked reporters a short time ago at Bethesda Naval Hospital, where the operation took place. And Imus in Washington microphones were there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, the problem is simple. Between Dr. King's birthday and my journey to the West Coast to express my deep concern, I'll bit my lower lip until I gnawed it off. And now, fortunately, uh, David Gergen was right behind me when it happened, as he normally is, with his nose you know where, and he found it. Thankfully, the same doctor who sewed John Bobbitt's penis back on was available to reattach my lip. Now, there's some damned irony there, ain't there? You bet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Doctors say the president should regain full use of his lower lip in time for a soon-to-be scheduled news conference at which he will express his gratitude to the American public for the recent bump in his popularity ratings. In other news, a mystery solved in Texas, where scientists say they have traced the source of an incessant, unnerving, high-pitched whine in the city of Austin to the home of Bobby Ray Inman. The Napoleon-hatted naval retread the Clinton administration has been seeking as its next defense secretary. The spokesman for the Justice Department says members of the ATF are already on the way. Meantime, back at the White House, spokesperson George Stephanopoulos, ignoring D.D. Myers, as is so often the case, says Inman is going to be difficult to replace. Bobby had... Bobby had that certain indefinable something, that je ne sais quoi, with that cranium that looked like a baby being pulled out of a turkey baster. 
tombstone teeth, all that. Homely cute, you know. He and I just hit it off fabulously. Oh, well, such is life, Nespa. <laughs> the White House, meantime, is said to be scrutinizing lists of all the nation's state fair carnival sideshows in its search to come up with a suitable Inman replacement <laughs> who will fit the complexion of the rest of the Clinton cabinet yeah. as well as Inman would have. <laughs> diddle it, diddle it, diddle it. Another cabinet officer on the headlines today, yeah. Labor Secretary Robert Reich, who has announced that the administration is going to dramatically step up enforcement of workplace safety laws to reduce the number of people injured and killed on the job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reich is himself a victim of such a mishap, having once been nearly six feet six inches tall before he was crushed beneath the weight of his own ego a few years back, mashing him to his present three foot eight inch height. And finally, there is some good news at last for talented toe looper Tanya Harding in what has otherwise been a most difficult period for her. Though certainly nearly all the Olympic riches she once imagined for herself will never happen, not all endorsement money is gone, it appears, as her publicist says that Miss Harding has just signed a contract to become a celebrity spokesperson for the club. <laughs> oh, I get it. And now here on the I Miss the Morning program, Beavis and Bubba. Hey, Bubba, what's the deal with, like, all these buses? Well, Beavis, that's the Healthcare Express. What is it, like some rock band on tour or something? <laughs> well, not exactly, Beavis. It's Americans like you and me who all have tales to tell about their bad experiences with health care. That motorcycle dude with the one arm is cool. Yeah. Check out that little nurse over there. She's pretty hot, isn't she? I think I'm getting a chub. I need health care, because, like, I once had an M80 blow up in my hand and stuff, and, like, I didn't even have a band-aid. Well, Beavis, I feel your pain. For the most part, I think the health care system in this country sucks. And I hate stuff that sucks. Yeah, yeah, me too. But why are you going to all this trouble to fix it? Beavis, I've dedicated my life to the spirit of the famous saying, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Who said that? Kennedy. Wow, she's cool. She rocks. No, not the young lady from MTV. John Fitzgerald Kennedy. I've tried to pattern my life after him. Oh, so like, do you drink a lot? No, that's his brother. Oh, so like, do you do a lot of drugs then? No, that's my brother. Clinton, not to praise him. And at the rate his presidency is going lately, his may very well be the next body they find alongside that cannon in the park. That'll be fine. I tell you, I wouldn't blame him if he just decided to end it all. Things are not going all that well for Bubba lately. More appearances of impropriety. Ah, that old Clinton bugaboo. <laughs> Paula Jones has, pardon the expression, reared her ugly head again, setting a deadline for an apology from Bill for rearing his ugly head at her in the Arkansas hotel room. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of ugly heads rearing, Hillary's finally come out of hibernation. That will be enough. And apparently is determined to perform CPR on the corpse known as health care. <laughs> hey, Hill, why don't you just give it some chicken soup? It couldn't hurt. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You're not the type who cooks. Besides, anything to do with chicken must be somewhat of a sore spot around the White House these days since the unfortunate departure of Colonel Espy. <laughs> and my friends, I'm employing some of my famous Limbaugh restraint regarding the aforementioned Aggie secretary as the appellation of Colonel will be my only chicken reference associated with him today. What's the over-under on how many of the original cabinet members will be left by the time 96 rolls around? Who will be the next to fall? Will it be the Aretha Franklin in the Salvation Army uniform, Joycelyn Elders? <laughs> well, my money's on Bill Perry. His latest is stating that there is no clear answer on how long U.S. troops will be needed in Haiti, saying that it depends on how fast an effective Haitian police force can replace them. Well, 
what exactly would constitute an effective Haitian police force? Stronger juju than the criminals? Stop or I'll turn you into a warthog. Oh, I don't know about you, but I certainly feel safe knowing this prodigy is our Secretary of Defense. I tell you, Homer Formsby couldn't renovate this cabinet. Dilly, 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 dilly. Time for a feminazi army update. Oh, Hillary Clinton, the first bra line of the radical feminist movement, is reading a book on Eleanor Roosevelt's non-traditional role in her husband's presidency. Hillary patterning her life after Eleanor Roosevelt? No wonder Bubba's so confused. He's trying to be JFK, and she wants him to be FDR. But she should realize this will never happen. You see, it's almost impossible to get your pants around your ankles when you're sitting in a wheelchair. <laughs> More up to this. Every right-wing boy and girl all around the industrialized world gonna do the limbaugh rock all around the limbaugh clock. <laughs> Bubba be nimble, will he be slick? First husband Clinton makes me sick. <laughs> be the first one on your block. Try and do the limbaugh rock. <laughs> Limbaugh's to the right now. A little further to the right now. A little further to the right. How conservative can you go? <laughs> Clinton's main artillery is that shrew Miss Hillary. We here at the EIB fear her feminazi tyranny. Though she loves to politic, she'd be better at turning trick. Don't intend to offend or shock. I'm just doing the Limbaugh rock. <laughs> and now, time for another homosexual update. According to Outweek, the you should excuse the expression homosexual rag, gay weddings are on the rise. My question is, at a homosexual wedding, where do they stick the bouquet? <laughs> White's my face and red's my neck. Quite far from politically correct. Lifetime member of the NRA. Same goes for the KKK. All the homeboys in my hood all wear hoods like homies should. Put a Negro in a hammerlock. Come on, do the Lemba rock. Come on over to the right now. You don't have to be that bright now. <laughs> How conservative can you go? Rush Limbaugh saying Sieg Heil. <laughs> and remember, folks, if an Afro-American liberal lesbian feminazi Jew should move into your neighborhood, do the right thing. Kill her. <laughs> More after this. Military Affairs Advisor, the late General George S. Patton. At ease, as you were. This is an emergency evaluation session for the purpose of examining the wussing out of leadership at the highest echelons of our government. Acronym, WOOL, as in chief, as in bend over, bighorn, it's button the mutton time. <laughs> Pitiful. Private, kill the lights, give me the overhead. Slide one. Pictured on this staff, upside down as a signal of distress, is an American flag. Pictured on this bar stool, upside down as a signal of excess, is an American fag. Save your letters. It's their term they use now themselves. Fine with me. Anyway, I'm afraid a certain tone, often associated with the latter, has begun to subvert the former in our great nation. Still with me? No way? Good. I'll proceed. We've just witnessed two examples of wuss butt leadership. A wimp trail leads straight into the Oval Office as surely as that blood trail goes from Bundy to Rockingham. Next slide. This, as I'm sure you know, is President Past, Bush, Walker, Herbert, George, and Loser. The man who prosecuted the glorious campaign known as Desert Storm has just aligned himself with a weepy-eyed, fur-fighting, boot-stamp-sucking, glass-ceiling-sobbing, Colt Cobra-confiscating, Dalai Lama lace-licking left. People, George Herbert Walker Bush has resigned from the NRA. Oh. <laughs> at ease, at ease. I feel your pain. And his reason? Because the NRA, in a recent bulletin to its members, said federal agents wearing Nazi bucket helmets, jackboots, and stormtrooper outfits harass and intimidate law-abiding citizens. Here's my question. What is wrong with that? <laughs> Adding to the insult and possible conspiracy, 
Bush's successor, Bill Clinton, on this marshmallow mission to Moscow, rolled up in a fetal position and begged Boris Yeltsin not to scare him during their discussions about selling nuclear technology to Iran. Pathetic. Result? Clinton and Warren Christopher think great progress was achieved because Yeltsin agreed not to sell Iran a f***ing water wheel or something as part of a larger package providing some camel-kissing Ayatollah with nuclear reactors. Here's my next question. Which way to the fallout shelters? It's like winning a promise from Timothy McVeigh that in the future he'll only rent from Hertz. Two words, people, for Bush and Bubba, not happening. While controversial, it may be time for new leadership. For president, he ain't pretty, he's G. Gordon Liddy. Anybody who can stare you in the eye and smile as you drive a railroad spike through delicate body parts is okay by me. Thank you for your attention. That is all. In sports, quickly, the Bulls over Orlando, 104 to 94, as uh, Michael went back to wearing number 23. God. Series tied at one each. He's yeah. an enigma. <laughs> no, no, Lou, I said an enigma. <laughs> Wait, no, but he said you moron. God almighty. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. Glenn Harris, a phys ed teacher, is apparently bouncing around the country with a 15-year-old student, an honor student. That kind of age disparity, that's disgraceful. Isn't it, though? <laughs> Sick. I hate to see that right. sort of thing. He was last seen in an Auto Body Express shirt. <laughs> in the morning. Sports. I don't think I have a vendetta, but I mean, I mean, the chick calls, they keep calling against me. I mean, I'm frustrated. I mean, I want to play. I mean, I think I'm a big part of this team, and, you know, um, all right, well, I'm tired of being on the bench watching. Shut up. Patrick Ewing frustrated with a less than favorable assessment of the officiating last night in Indianapolis as another possible win turned into a loss for the Knicks. I'm Scott Muni in for Mike Breen on assignment in Indiana for I Miss in the Morning 2020 Sports. This 2020 sports report is sponsored by Oldsmobile and your tri-state good olds guys. The Knicks went into overtime, resulting in a crushing loss to the Pacers 97-95 in a game which saw Pacers center the Duncan Dutchman Rick Smiths scoring 19 of his 21 points after halftime. In Phoenix last night, Suns forward the Dunkin' Donuts, Charles Barkley, had a game-high 30 points, coasting to their fifth straight playoff win against the Houston Rockets, 118-94. When asked why they couldn't do this well last year against Houston, Sir Charles threw a little hissy fit. Last year was last year, and we don't want to discuss last year. I don't care about last year. I can't control what happened last year. And uh, we just got to come out Saturday and Sunday and be ready to play. I know they're going to play better. And that's it. I mean, that's no question. That's your could count. That's, that's all y'all questions right there. See, I don't blame Charles Barkley. Some pant load with a microphone says, so got it. I mean, what kind of question is that? How Last can you couldn't year. do as well as you did live? What, what, what is that? How does that relate to anything? How is that relevant? Well, no wonder these athletes get torqued off of these geese like Breen. Said, right, it's last year's last year. You're sticking oh. a mic at her face saying, how come you can? Well, well get out God, of here. I mean, that's ridiculous. Die. Scott Muni continues. Tonight in Scarsdale, the event the sporting world has been waiting for, the Imus in the Morning All Stars will take on Scarsdale High School, a basketball bloodbath in the yuppie capital of Westchester County. Starting in the lineup for Team Imus, Bernie the producer McGurk and Spud Webb role model Lou on the roof Rufino. <laughs> Coach for the All-Stars Don Imus has been running his mouth Reggie Miller style about how his team will put a hurt on the opposing team Michael Jordan style. Those playing for the I-Man hope that he will be silenced sometime during the game Jack Kevorkian style. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. The game is at 8 o'clock at the Scarsdale High School gym. All right. It's 22 till the hour. Naomi Judd canceled this morning, so... She and her fat daughter are going to take a minor beating. <laughs> well, maybe not. Wake up! I miss in the morning. out there, but uh, 
I'm in. I'm with you. I'm hanging in there. I'll be here till 6 a.m. This is. This has been a uh, very interesting evening. I usually try and take a little uh, nap before I uh, come on the air, but between the Rangers and the Flyers and the. But, uh, you know, but uh, for us, we were just going to, we knew it, we had to be patient. We couldn't open it up or change our style at all against Nordiques and, and just uh, slowly tried to plug away and get our goals here and there and finally made a game of it uh, when Alex scored. At home, at work, on the road, or anywhere else, take us with you. We're the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN New York. Do you think you could play the hot corner? Actual preference, and a lot of corporations said, we don't want to touch it. That's not Ben Rice's fault. Sports Radio 66, the fan, Here's Bill now from Pleasantville. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. How are you? Pretty exciting interview. Shut up. Why not air like a test tone? <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's like listening to the best of I'm this unplugged. <laughs> if your radio light sucks in the morning, you're listening to I miss in the morning. Detroit manager Sparky Anderson disgusted with his players. I've never been at a baseball game. Well, that many idiots showed up. Sparky may be a bad baseball team, but he's still as sharp as ever, isn't he? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Take fourth base. <laughs> Good morning at 9 o'clock. This is John Minko, the WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. Richard Deere back with you on the fan. Final hour in for Christopher Russo. Steve Summers coming around at 10 o'clock. Chris will be back from his honeymoon. For a, a raucous show on Monday, I think we can guarantee that from uh, 1 until 6. We'll take your phone calls later on this hour. Susan Waldman will join us. Bill Guerin of the Devils will be here as well. Talk about their uh, exciting overtime win, one nothing over the uh, Boston Bruins. You know, I was thinking, if you're a Devil fan or if you're a hockey fan, Steve Summers, don't you know, to take you through until Mets baseball. In for Christopher Russo, who is enjoying the final days of his honeymoon. Thanks to Mr. Hayes and Mr. Cohn for putting this thing together. John Minko is next. Richard Neer, catch you at noon tomorrow on The Fan. Now from NBC Sports, Don Crickey. Good morning, Don. Good morning, I'm in. Have you ever done women's golf? I have. So apparently, the at least Ben Wright says the lesbians are ruining the tour, but that hasn't been your experience, has it? Well, there's yeah. some things you just don't do. I mean, you... You like screaming Jay Hawkins, right? Yeah. But you don't want him singing the Ave Maria. No, you don't. <laughs> Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to Imus in the morning. Uh, apparently when the blood testing came back, uh, Johnny Cochran went to see O.J. Mm. and said to him, you know, there's some pretty bad news, but there's some good news. And uh, O.J. said, what's the bad news? Well, Johnny said, there's matches all over the place. There are bloods at your house and your bloods at theirs. And you're totally implicated. O.J. composed himself and said, well, what can the good news be? He said, O.J., your cholesterol is below 130. <laughs> <laughs> Sports Radio 66. FAN, the flagship station for New York Mets baseball. Pop. How you be at 10 06 and five seconds on this Saturday morning on the fan, New York City. Steve Summers here, you there. Mike Ace and Stevie Cohen on the other side of the glass, 718 937 6666. Number to call as we begin now with a Saturday schmooze with a schmear until Mets baseball at one o'clock on your fan, New York City. Calling boarded for 
45 to 24, and when you lose the battle of the boards by 21, maybe you can make a good argument that you looked at that before you look at the officials as uh, that second team along with Indiana ganging up on the Knicks. It's 10.59 and 20 seconds Saturday morning on the fan, New York City. Steve Summers here and you there. You know from the number, and of course, Mets baseball at one on the fan, New York. Sports Radio. Temperature is 67 degrees, and that's what's happening. This is John Minko with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Knicks basketball. Well, morning to you, and how you be at 11.05, 30 seconds on a Saturday morning on the fan New York City. Steve Summers sitting in for the angry puppy this Saturday morning. Michael Hayes and Stevie Cohn on the other side of the glass, 718-937-6666. Number to call as we continue with the morning Saturday schmooze with a schmear. Until Mets baseball at 1 o'clock, right here on your fan, New York City. Steve Summers here, you there, Michael Hayes and Stevie Cohn on the other side of the glass as we continue with a Saturday schmooze with a schmear until Mets baseball at 1 o'clock here on the fan, New York, 718-937-6666, number to call, stick around because it is, I think, Joe Tomlinson with your update on the fan, New York. Sports Radio.